off by saying I think uh, the presentations that we had today were just superior. Uh, all of the presenters gave us a lot to think about. The uh, pre and post script uh, presentation, there's a lot of changes coming up with the MBA and information that he filled you in on. A lot of us had that this year with SAN Air uh, uh, type A inspections had to be done and end by a certain time, so more, uh, I'm sure they filled you in on that and more to come with that. The basic first aid and bloodborne pathogens through that particular one with the three presenters, they kept, they kept me in stitches while I was in there talking about things. But a lot of things were up need to go back and also talk to uh, the school administrators during our a and meetings that are coming up this next week about getting information from the school nurses uh, continuing. Um, you know, I think it's gotten better over the years, but there's always, uh, we still need to highlight that information. Operation Lifesaver, uh, the presentation was great, and the speaker, uh, I guess, let me know if when you're going around looking at your roots, in particular, if there's any, uh, not only just for railroads, but if any roads need to be uh, trimmed as far as uh, overhanging trees and everything, let us know so we can start getting the list to county and state roads. Uh, it'll take them a while to get to them. They're usually very responsive. Uh, transforming air culture through superior customer service with Vanessa Bass, she brought us a lot of uh, information and things that maybe all, uh, that you may already be doing, with other things to think about from her years of experience in the school and working with bus drivers, helping administrators uh, with problems that they have, because a lot of time is spent with these kids getting down to the bottom of things, and your help uh, is so important. As we saw in uh, Joseph Boy's presentation, the awareness and response to potential threats, the importance uh, that we have uh, as bus drivers to be always, uh, you know, being cognizant of the things around us and what we can do. I'm going to put a sign-up sheet up front if anyone would like to be a commit on the committee uh, that we'll be meeting with them and really uh, discussing more about different ideas. Uh, for bus drivers and for us for air communication with the emergency uh, 911 center. So I'll just set it up front and uh, for you to sign up. Or, or if you think about it later, just give us a call and then we'll be setting up a meeting time with them. So, uh, but before we go on to our HR presentation, I want to, uh, you've got a lot of paperwork here. And Donna Clow, Donna, please stand. <laughs> they know you, but uh, I want to give her a hand because she's always keeping us up with everything. And I tell you, um, it's really hectic keeping, uh, and we'll go through it more addresses, phone numbers, bus information. She is the guru here, uh, keeping all of her records straight. And I'd also like to Mary Dawkins. Mary, if you can stand and everybody know Mary. She's at the warehouse uh, and in the operations center, and she is, you hear her on the radio first thing in the morning. And she also keeps everybody straight. And uh, I don't know what we would do without both of them on a daily basis. Uh, making things run smoothly. So it takes a team of people, and I just want to give both of them another big hand. Okay, so uh, our next presenter, and you've all heard um, Ms. Bass, um, the intern, uh, uh, um, HR director. Here we go. Vanessa. I told Margaret, I said, I've 
and hollering and screaming at you all all day long. The last thing I need is a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really just using my cafeteria voice. Well, y'all figured out by now, like Neanderthal, the Neanderthal lady, we didn't have policies to go over when I first started. But we know in the 21st century, some things have changed. So we do have a whole host of policies, but what we decided to do today was give you an overview. And in that way, all of you all are responsible to go and look at the entire policy. Because even though I told you in the session not to say I don't know, I really don't want you to say I don't know if some infraction occurs that you are responsible for, and if you say, I don't know. So welcome to the afternoon session. I've already had my conversation about the carbohydrates that kept y'all a little docile by session four, but I'm gonna to try to move through. All of you all have gone to school, like I said before, so I don't have to read everything verbatim. When you get to a place where you can pull up our website, we do need you Excuse me, we do need you to look at the policies more closely because when you sign off that I have reviewed everything today, this orange salmon paper, pinkish, whatever color it may be, we're going to select it back. It will be kept in Ms. Donna's office, I believe. Then that way you're saying that I have reviewed those and that you will go back to the website. And it tells you that I think at the top that you can locate them at our website. Most of you all that are not new have looked at the policies previously. If you do other things in the system, like coach, you also have looked at them. So all right, Mr. Murdoch, we're gonna do what you do best. You're gonna drive. <laughs> Everybody should have in mind, he's doing a wonderful job getting that out um, to you. So, right. you're going to review policies. Let's go, policy number one. Anybody in here that um, is new this year, MSDE sleeps at night. Yeah, but yeah, sleeps at night and come up with great ideas for us to do. So if you are a new employee since July 1, there's a brand new house bill that we had to put in effect. House bill, or we refer to it as HB 486. It is about inappropriateness, sexual abuse with students. If you're new, I would imagine it has already been sent out. It is several forms that you would have to take to previous employees, employers, that you have been an employee for. They have to fill out to the best of their knowledge. They are not aware of any sexual allegations that have been brought against you in their employment. They will sign the forms and send them back to HR, or in, in, in your case, it'll come through Margaret Allen. We will have those forms, we have everything electronically, that you would have to run it off, print it off, and give it to previous employees. But I don't think I'm talking, anybody new since? Oh, you get pay dirt, Margaret Ellen. We have nobody that has to do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there'll be some. We know it's some coming, but 
in case I'd like for the entire family to know the language because somebody may ask you about it if they become new. So at least you know if you're really um, an information nerd like me, you can Google it and look up um, HV 46. It's, 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 it's a protective house bill. Sometimes they come up with things that doesn't make sense, but this is really important. It protects the children. It protects the children. And then that way we don't have to see any, any inappropriate headlines when it refers to school systems about us not being or doing our due diligence in hiring people who um, have had some indiscretions. Let me say that. Okay. Oh, let me, nobody's new at all, so you all don't have to do um, your I-9. No, everybody says we give a whole return staff. Great, let's move on. Okay, there is a non-discrimination statement. We have to have that. That just lets us know exactly what it says. We do not discriminate race, creed, gender, the whole list of things. Religion, physical characteristics, I am not going to read all of this because we went to school. Is it anybody that, that, that doesn't understand we do not discriminate? Okay, outstanding. Outstanding. All right, one of the first policies that you will need to look at in depth online is bullying, harassment, and intimidation. Not only does it re, uh, require students, but to work with students who perceive that they've been bullied, there is workplace hostility. So it also applies to us. So if you feel like you've been intimidated, harassed, or bullied, Please get the appropriate paperwork from your immediate supervisors and continue to do that paperwork such that it reach Mr. Pender's desk. It would go to Mr. Pender's desk. That is one of the first policies, I think. What is it? Okay. Child abuse and neglect. I talked a little bit about my about that in my sessions, that you all see the children first. So if you perceive that it could be some neglect, just proceed. Because we're looking to it, if it's nothing, if it's accidental, but you did what you were supposed to do, you reported it. And neglect looks different. It could look like God might not have change clothes today. It might look like I did not eat today. But if you perceive anything, it's just your perception. And perception is truth to whoever the thief is. It's your truth. It's not wrong. It's just a perception. So make sure you report that out. And then if you find that it is not anything that needs to be looked at any further, thank you. Because it could be a time that you report that and it is a reason to worry, and for us to worry, and for us to notify social services. Physical abuse, that's all those things. You know your children. I was surprised at how many people had had the same babies for a long time. So you know your children. So if you see some unexplained bruises or whelps, burns, fractures, abrasions, lacerations, anything that's on their body that is usually not on their body and they kind of don't want to talk about it, be safe. Report it. I told y'all we'd be at work like for 12 o'clock the next day trying to fill out the paperwork, but we, we'd rather do that than have something occur to a child and have the environment not to be safe and secure and we be responsible for that not taking place. All right, this is basically House Bill 46, sexual abuse. It comes in all forms. 
child pornography, human trafficking, incest, rape, sexual offense at any degree, sodomy, unnatural or perverted sexual acts. Who thought I'd have that on the list when I started this? Very, very serious allegation. Do not close your eyes to any of this that could occur. Remember it is perception. Remember you have an obligation to report it because you're doing precious cargo and you will see them again. All right, mental injury. You have to think about that a little bit. Mental injury means, and I will read this because we usually don't see this as often as we see um, physical and sexual means the observable, identifiable, substantial impairment of the child's mental or psychological ability to function. Okay, that could have a lot of manifestations. It could look differently for any child. I mean, you, we know when tragedies occur, we hear that children were like in the basement and didn't eat, but they were coming out regularly on a regular basis, and you say, I never knew that. So be observant. I know your buses are larger than I thought, and some of y'all have smaller buses if you're going to certain sites, but be observable of that child. Learn that job. It starts in the morning. Good morning, how you doing? If you've had a chatty Kathy like for several years, and all of a sudden we got a major shutdown, we move out to sea, we're not sitting with our friends, we're not talking to our friends. Keep an eye on that. Share it with the yard. Share it with people. Let the principal know. If your principal is someone like I was, and they're out in the room, in the driveway when my bus drivers came, they say, you know, Miss Pat, I'm not real sure. Remember that semicolon? But you know something good not coming behind the bus, you know that, but. So this is where you let people know. Get it off of you. Let somebody know, because what we're finding out as we go through the climate we live in, people thought it was odd, not real odd, so we don't say anything. So if you have any inclination that it might be something out of the ordinary, Please let somebody know that can move it along and get it where it needs to be for it to be rectified. Neglect, leaving a child unattended. We know at and come back to you. You know that a lot of parents have to work. You know, or they're gonna run out a minute and come back, and then we hear tragedies behind that. If you think a child is being left unattended, you need to report that also. Make sure you report it. Report is my new afternoon word. Report. See something, say something. I know it's become a cliche, but if people don't take that seriously, we always find ourselves in predicaments that we could have avoided if we said something. I didn't know that they were lonely. I didn't know this, I didn't know that. I just thought something was odd. <coughs> All right, the oral reporting should be done, um, made to, to social services. Principals will inform you of how they like it. My principal that I had when I was AP, uh, they feel didn't like surprises. If I was gonna call social services to report something, he did not want to know that I reported it to them and not to him. So what I did was I had the office phone in my hand and I talked to both of them at the same time. Then that way, there were no minutes between the time that I called social services and let his office know. Could bring me his secretary, said, oh, Lord, you can make call some service. I said, mm -hmm, got him online now. <laughs> because you, you really want to cover yourself also. 
We want to work. If we are working and you're doing something you do like, you do not want a miscommunication on a huge event to come between you and your income. We don't like things to come between us and our income. So make sure you let those services know verbally and let your school principal know. Now, your principals, and then, you know, this is for everybody in the, in the county, but the process might be different through um, transportation, but just make sure principals don't want to know that you call social services. So let them know when you pull in or either call them back, communication is the key. Right, okay, okay. We will let them know. It's different everywhere you go. So we, so Margaret Ellen said that she will call She'll call me. Okay. All right. You contact the principal. The principal call me. So we we will get involved either way because it has to be noted. So sometimes you have to call um, HR, but make just make sure it is reported to social services. Report, report, report. The person making the oral report is also responsible for submitting the written report. So there is a form, it used to be on yellow paper, it's probably on a different kind of paper, and it's a DHR SSA form 180, different numbers all over the state. It's available in each school's office. And it's a written report. I don't know if I missed this. Thank you. I just, I'm, I'm trying to get you out here as soon as I can. Um, the written report is going to be filled out by the person presenting the information. That will be you. The report then is given to the principal. The principal will give it to us. So it's really important that you get that form. And ask the, ask the principal secretary. They are all available for you all to get upon asking. Oh, but I just want to tell them um, where they go. Because if they got to fill that paper, go back to one, go back to one. There will be two copies, one sent to the Queen Anne County um, Social Services, one copy to the state's attorney, and one copy to the people personnel working in the county. But many times if it's something sexual or physical, we do have people who do that. That's the work they do, a people personnel worker. It's what they do. They go out, they, they coordinate services with social services, mental health facilitators, that's what they do. And also the school counselor, if it's something that's going on in school, we hope that it's not an in-school issue, but if it is, so you have three tiers there, you have the people personnel working, you have the uh, school counselor, and you more than likely will have a social worker eventually involved and then your principal and assistant principal. Okay. Any person who, in good faith, makes and participates in making a report of abuse, it is confidentiality. We love, you know, school system folk. Well, let me back up. I told people that, you know, I never live where I work and I don't work where I live. And I do that. Purposely, I'm not doing anything that I'm ashamed of. Trust me, because I wouldn't have worked this long. But your private life is your private life. So if you report something, we want that held in confidence. It is as close to you as a HIPAA violation. You know, that's your, your health information that you don't want shared. Well, we will not share who's making the report. Because what's going to happen after the report goes in, social, social services have to look at it. So they will send a team out. Somebody will interview the parents. If it's, if it's a uh, generational household, somebody will talk to the parents, somebody will talk to the grandparents, somebody will going to come to the school, talk to the teachers, and sometimes the school nurse. Sometimes the school nurse. It could be medication the child's not getting. 
It could be a whole host of things you never think about under neglect or abuse, not getting the appropriate nourishment, but social services dispatches the team out to take basically a, a statement that could be used in the court proceeding if necessary. Hope not, but if necessary. So that's what it looks like. So after you do the reporting of self and confidence, they will more than likely contact you, but it, it will more than likely be away from your job site. Because, you know, we like to talk, we can't hold water, it's unfortunate, but they will pick a place that would be um, somewhat off the beaten path, that people could not connect the dots that it's you. Because if, if, if it gets out that we report and they can get back who did it, nobody will do it, nobody will report, so the child is still held at home. So we want to make sure that, that we do it, but understand you'll have immunity and held in strictest confidence. And, it, and more than likely, you need not tell anyone. You need not tell anyone. Because unfortunately, it's like the telephone game you used to play. Tell one person, get to the next person, it keeps getting better and better. And none of it's what you originally said. So mm -mm, you don't want to do that. Confidentiality is confidentiality. And I will say, in, in all things, this is the most important that that confidentiality really be held up. Because you're talking about you, you're talking about a child, and you're talking about a family, where in the end, the allegations may, may prove false. All right, this is, this is not good. Failure to report. You may be suspended or dismissed if no one failed to report suspected child abuse that's physical, sexual, or neglect. It's all three of the subtitles we just looked at. Please report. Like I said, it may prove to be false or what your perception was, but it's not what your perception was. All right, sexual harassment. This is interesting. This is this is a grown folk law. This is Title IX. So it applies to schools too, and it applies to inappropriateness to adult to child relationships. But it also talks about workplace hostility. One of which is a quid pro quo. That means if you do this, I do that. Don't do it. That was my amen corner. Yes, don't do it. Don't do it. Because sometimes in a, in a hostile work environment, and I think this will be described to you, you know, it, it's almost like the bully at work. You go to work, and people just make it so bad for you to work in a certain place. That's workplace hostility, and it's also covered under Title IX. Okay. But that lets me know you have familiarity with it. It is very, it's a federal law. It's not a, it's not a Maryland law. It is a federal statute. It is a federal law. And you hear about it a lot of times. I think the worst case was with the gymnast and Dr. Nasser. He got 101 years. And that's probably the first time you heard of Title IX. And, and a severe, swift punishment um, of a person that participated in inappropriateness that fell under the Title IX federal statute. 101 years for the gymnast, the young gymnast, the female gymnast. I just, I describe, I just described the hostile work environment and quick pro quo. So we're not going to do any of that, right? That Title IX is not going to come in human resources. That's a lot of midnight oil for everybody. Okay. Now, you can handle Title IX issues yourself. Stop it. Just tell the person to stop it. I don't want to participate. 
okay with this. I have no interest in this. And it's always good to kind of handle your business first. But however, if the person does not listen to you, you be, and the reason why the person doesn't listen because he's got away with it, he or she has gotten away with it a long time. So if it was good then, it's good now, better. Yeah. No, stop it and report it. The only thing that stops people from doing inappropriate behavior is a consequence attached to that behavior. It has to be consequences. And it seems like more and more we, get, we hear more and more of this. So you really have to tell people, stop. If not, I'm going to report you. In my previous district, we had to watch these little snippets. Nobody reviews, so we had to watch these little seven minute snippets. And they had a snippet about this, and it was in reverse. It was a male worker, and he worked for Mrs. Wilson. And Mrs. Wilson had a hand problem. It, 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 it gets across, and, and you know what? You looked at it because it's usually the reverse, but this time it was the gentleman working, and Mrs. Wilson had a space proximity problem. She had a hand problem. She, she looked like she couldn't get by his chair. She had to touch the chair. So then we took the little quiz, but it was a seven minute. We laughed about it. We kept saying, oh, is that a Miss Wilson violation? Is that a Miss Wilson violation? I'm not Miss Wilson. The, the ladies who had to watch that. So it was very interesting, and we kind of laughed and, and joked about it, but we knew that that is something that could be misperceived by a male, and, re and women can be reported, and we don't want to be Miss Wilson. I get a snippet of that, I might send that out if they let me do it without having to have to pay for the snippet.
as a dismissal opportunity. Judgment, it speaks to judgment. You know it speaks to safety. And discretion. Because I'm telling you now, you have no friends and there are no secrets. Somebody want to tell and somebody's going to find out. In education, there are no secrets and somebody's going to tell. So, your sign off of this policy basically says it's illegal to dispense, possess, any illegal drugs at any time. There's another slide on here that talks about self-reporting. Because if you should come across an opportunity where this might fall into your life and you are arrested, yeah, tell on yourself. You have to call us and let us know that you have been detained for inappropriateness on either front. Alcohol, dry, it's usually dry miles wrong. It's that's what it is. You know, I can get a whole lot of colorful words up here, but it's driving and getting locked up, and you sitting up in jail, you got to call up, and you are going to be dismissed probably for driving. I don't know, any of them may know, Mr. Murdoch, if you driving while drunk, I mean, that might be a violation of MDOT, even though you didn't have babies with you. Drugs, same difference. Do not sell drugs, don't buy drugs. It's an undercover drug agent in your, in your life. If you get caught, you have to call the system and let us know that you've been detained. And you might as well call. Let me tell you a little secret. In the world of electronics, we're going to get the, we're gonna get the hit. It's coming back. It's coming back on you, if you're an employee of the county, and I'm sure contract is the same way, it's coming back. We're going to know on Monday, you were incarcerated on Saturday. You got out on Sunday, and when Margaret Allen checked her email, ooh, it's a background hit. It's not good. It's not good. And I'm almost sure it's grounds for dismissal. Poor judgment, indiscretions, poor decision making. All right. I don't know, baby. I don't know anybody that ever got away with it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not talking about it. We did. Um, it tells you what I just said. You can be suspended or dismissed. And, and, and I'm not evading the question. It could be another state and it might take a while. But if you get locked up in the state of Maryland, okay, it's all good. All right then. It wasn't me. All right, tobacco, tobacco free schools, you know, and now I know all of y'all know, you cannot smoke on campus. Went to back, yeah, it should. <laughs> it should. It should. Um, and it probably is too. They've been too. I would imagine. I, I, you know, that's new, but I imagine because it's the same vein and it's nicotine. I think it's vaping also. I would think an educated guess that it would be. Um, oh yeah, e-cigarettes and vaping can't do any of those things on school campuses or the bus. Oh, don't date anybody here. <laughs> I, and, and you know, and I always think, I always think, it, 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 you work here. That, um, I'm going to ask you all that you kind of pay attention. It's, it's, it's um, something that people always get written up for. I just want to make sure you hear what I'm saying. Okay. <coughs> Relationships between staff and students 
Don't date your bus driver, your bus driver. Don't do that. Still, don't do that. Don't do that. We can talk about this. Any non-professional relationship or engaging in sexual relationships between staff and students in red is prohibited. Don't do that. Don't do that. Plenty, plenty of people that we can date, don't, don't do that. Don't date children. Children, that could be 21 and under if they lost a grade. Don't do that. This includes phone calls, texts, emails that are excessive. I would say don't do it at all, but excessive or can be interpreted as less than professional or sexual nature. I don't have to stay on that subject because don't do that. It is grounds for dismissal. More than likely, in this climate, you're going to be dismissed. Any suspicious dating, inappropriate relationships, or sexual relations between an employee and students, y'all gotta call me up and tell me that. I don't wanna know that. I, I would hope that we have hired responsible adults. I would hope we have hired responsible adults. Next. Self-reporting. That's what I just said. Make sure if any of these things, topics that I have covered today, make sure you self-report. It says for every employee to self-report charges of arrest and convictions that are listed in this policy against persons, sexual nature, including weapons, drugs, crime against property, hate crimes, well, they say money crime, but I think they mean racketeering, and criminal traffic violations. For instance, manslaughter. You're gonna kill somebody while we drive it wrong. Don't do that either. Acceptable use of electronic networks. All right, we all have electronics in the building. They're not my favorite, but they're necessary evil. Make sure you use those appropriate. When it comes for instructional value, if you're using it to instruct something, you all are really not my teachers and you may not be in the classroom. But if you are at the yard, if you're at the warehouse, please do not use equipment to look at things that are inappropriate and not of educational value. Social networking, be very careful. Be very careful. Facebook, they're wonderful tools used in the right way. But it goes back to judgment. Don't post everything. We don't have to post everything. Matter of fact, don't post nothing, but don't post anything. We don't have to be out tweeting and twitting. I asked Mr. Straight Love that. I said, do we have a Twitter policy? Because I just wanted to, you know, like, tweet out we had a great bus in service. I really wanted to do that, but I'm not taking pictures of everybody and smiling, doing the, look, the funny faces children do. But they are valuable in their own right. But many, many times they are misused. And they never go away. Once you put them out on the cloud or out there, they can be recovered. They don't go away. Erase does not mean disappear. Erase means you can't see it. Other folks can. Thank you very much. Okay, we've got a, um, a lot of information here uh, that we have ev every year, but uh, certainly it's good to have refreshers on it. Now, we have a lot that we're going through, and I want you to, uh, your packet of information that you have, uh, let's go, oh, okay, they want you to put these 
orange papers at the end of the uh, row, and Ronnie will come around and help pick them up. Okay. All right, the agenda. Let's take a look at that. Uh, I'm going to be going through a lot of this information quickly because some of it is things that you've seen before, but it's updates. Okay, number one. Uh, did you, the school bus safety training class in service handout, please sign and return. You have that at the end of the rows. And uh, also. The second, the information sheet handout. If there's anything on that that needs to be updated, fill that out. Otherwise, still hand the paper back at the end of the row so they know that nothing is wrong. So Donna can do her updates with that. The extra bus service handout. Please sign and return and put that at the end of the table for county drivers and substitutes only if uh, they want to uh, participate. Administrative changes handout. Take a look at that for your information. Uh, some of the changes uh, that you're probably already aware of this year, Sudlersville Middle School, uh, uh, has a change in principal. Robert Watkins is uh, Watkins is the principal, and Becky Tubman is the assistant principal. If you look at Stevensville Middle School, Mr. Sean Kenna is the principal. And also, we have one change. What used to be called Anchor Points has changed its name. And let me see, Don, is Anchor Points on here? On here, I don't see Anchor Points. It, it's Arise. 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 But it's not on here. I don't think it's on here. But there's a change in name with that. Okay, the next thing that we have school start times handout, you may want to just take a look at that. Last year we had a little bit of a problem in the afternoon of the dismissal time, or the morning dismissal times or arrival times. Uh, Centerville Middle was 335. It's still remaining 335, whereas the Kennard and Centerville Elementary 330. It has to do with their instructional times that they have to get in there. Um, we also have next the change in date in spring inspection form, um, and that is there so you can have it for your records. The scheduled early dismissal and unscheduled no, no changes, but this is just for your records. The disciplinary form, We've had this form for a number of years, but we still get old forms. So if you have anything that doesn't look like this, please toss it and put this in its place. Next, the school bus ride red light violation report. We're still keeping those and uh, filling them out as needed. The next one is the radio usage, and I'm not gonna go over that. We've gone over it before. Uh, but this is for your reference, and you may get a call sometime either for you to refer to this. The next uh, handout is procedures for footwear for bus drivers. That went into the uh, procedures last year, just making sure that you're uh, wearing um, uh, enclosed shoes, not sandals, basically. Uh, one important handout that's here that's um, new, the drug testing CBD products notice. This was sent by our uh, drug and alcohol representative that thought that everyone should have this information. I'm not going to read it to you, but there's a lot of products that are out there that we need to be aware of, uh, more so all the time. So this is the official sheet on that in your packet of information. 
Next, there's the MDOT, the email notification and submission process. Uh, I think they went through a lot of that. Uh, they may have in your class today, but certainly uh, that gives you the official and also phone numbers to contact. Another handout is the Bay Bridge. You may have seen this one. Uh, we've been to some meetings with this. We'll continue to. It's going to be coming up uh, pretty soon in October when all the uh, road construction is going to be taking place. They have different websites you can go to to find out that information. I know it's going to have an impact on us and particularly field trips or uh, buses going across uh, the bed. Uh, the DOT physical multiple counties handout is also information there uh, that we'll talk about further. We have, um, but certainly that's for your reference, the official copy. The MAID information talks about MAID insurance and what any questions that you may have about insurance, it gives a lot of interpretive guidelines. That's It's updated and it's important for you to take a look at. Also, the new COMAR, as far as revisions, we made copies for everyone. The uh, things that have changed in it are highlighted in yellow. I'm not going to read all those for you. Some of them are just minor changes. Some of the uh, cha other changes included people who are becoming drivers who haven't are uh, in the training stage that a lot of Comar pertains to them now. So those are a lot of the handouts that are in there. One thing um, that we've added, um, Donna handed out the books for each bus, but your pre-trip books. In your pre-trip book, there's a, uh, when you open the cover up, and Don, do you have, uh, well, anyway, if you don't have the book with you, it'll have the main card that'll be in your pre-trip book right as you open that up. And maybe somebody at each table might happen to have one. So in case there's an accident, you, you have that information right there. Also in your, your book, there's a number of other things that we've included. Uh, there's the name inside the book. There's the school calendar, the Comar, a discipline referral, evacuation procedures, uh, bus driver accident guidance, and we ask you to put your root sheet in there too, in the folder. So uh, you know we would really like that folder to be where a lot of information. If somebody has to get on your bus, they have everything that's needed right there. Uh, we worked on a couple things. I'm going to swing back to them um, as we get, and John will be doing a, a presentation, a, a quick one, but I want to go through some of the other things real uh, quick at this moment. Uh, number 20, weather delays, they still remain 90 minutes, no changes with that. Uh, again, 21 in Clement Weather, we port in on the radio to the Operations Center. 22 school messenger uh, will be used to notify drivers. So if phone numbers change, uh, this is again important for Donna to be the keeper of the numbers and address changes because it affects a lot of different things. Uh, proof of workman's comp turn into Donna before school starts for the contractors. Uh, route addition or changes need to be approved through the transportation office. Please remember the route sheets that you have and the route that is given is the official route. When we hand them out, if there are any changes, and you'll get them at the end of the day for all the regular bus routes, uh, those routes, if they're not followed in that way, uh, there are gonna be problems with it. The school, we, uh, the school runs off the list if there's an accident. We look at where the bus is at that point when there is an accident. We start notifying people prior to or after wherever they are when this happens. If we don't have the right information, if for some reason someone calls and they're sick, we go in, print off your route, and we tell someone, go there, they need it, it's an emergency situation, and that's the route we're following. 
So, you know, we want to make sure we have the accurate information. So please help us with that. If when you get your roots, you find that something isn't uh, the way it, you think it should be, you need to uh, let us know so we can take a look at it. And more times than not, you're probably right, but we'll, we want to check it out because there may be something that you didn't think about that we may have too. So anyway, uh, let's work together on that. Um, let's see here. Um, bus transfer forms, those particular ones in the transportation office. When we give out the routes, we're having a two week period, basically, that we want you to go look at your routes, you know, see what the, any issues are, to get back to us prior to, they, prior to the 23rd of August. Because on the 23rd, those routes are getting ready to go out on the website. Once they go on the website, parents are going to know that that's the bus. So you have enough time to take a look at them. If there needs to be some changes, if I need to put some, a few students on another bus because it's going to be too overloaded, we want to do that during this period of time. It's not saying that changes may not have to be made, but I'll tell you, it's a lot easier to have these done prior to than having to try to clean up thing problems once the parents and everyone have started getting used to their routine and what time their pickup is. Because if you try to put them on another bus and it's a time that's completely off, there's going to be pro you know there's going to be problems and. Uh, so anyway, we want to all work together to make it as seamless as possible. Driver to parent notices, we're still using those, or those are those half sheets. Uh, bus stop survey, um, we still have that if parents are, um, want a stop at theirs, they have to fill out a form uh, for that. Physicals are due when they expire as they have to be updated by the MBA. If not, they will downgrade your license. And that's becoming, we're getting all kinds of notices. We call you, we just want to make sure everything is okay. Uh, the MBA card, the CDL, you know, C. Donna, we need to make sure they're entered, not intrastate, that's checked on it. The substitute usage, the board approval letter will go to substitute drivers, board approved list of substitutes that go out to the contractors. Whenever a substitute is driving your bus, please contact the operation center. A few years ago, I told you about InfoFinder LE. That's the information system that talks from our TransFinder to the schools. They open that up. They're looking at messages that Mary puts on in the morning when you call in and say who's substituting, so they know what bus is substituting for which and also which driver and we make a copy of that each day to keep for our records. Um, the, again, I don't have to tell you about the law about cell phone use, including Bluetooth. The use of non-charter buses for non-school activities, um, and we'll talk, um, I'll talk to the bus companies about that. Uh, certainly, um, non-charter buses, school buses have to have the DOT numbers um, you know, for outside of the state. But if you're uh, doing field trips not related to the school system, it isn't covered under insurance naturally on weekends. Um, MSDE Comar required school bus driver evaluations. We continue to work on them. We would like to have evaluations um, every year if possible. Uh, we're working, it has to be a minimum of two years. Um, and that's for us to see what's on the routes and try to solve any uh, heads up on problems ahead of time. Uh, reporting accidents, John will be going over that shortly. The Roscoe grid, this is on 36, uh, where they're located. And if you need any assistance with that, please let us know. Badges, if for some reason you've lost your badge, this is number 37. You need to contact the Human Resource Office and get a new badge uh, you know, to go into the school. There may be new personnel that don't know you, uh, so please do that. Overnighters, we keep the log sheet. 
and we talk to the principals about you know information with that so please call the office with that for Mary in the mornings the pre-trip uh, booklet pages will be collected again every two months uh, the shredding of student information number 40 at the end of the school year if you have that any papers left from last year and uh, they need to be shredded if you haven't already done so so please do that the manifest uh, first manifest are due September 13th uh, 42 bus evacuations October through May activity trip evacuations we have field trip evacuations the uh, We'll also be doing updated naturally bus lists prior to the beginning of school. And we'll be doing audits, late buses, Queen Anne's County High School. Uh, we're still doing the other things, 47, 48, 49. And um, so um, head down to the first two weeks, we'll be doing bus counts again to give us a heads up. I haven't given John much time, but John, you want to uh, talk a little bit about the what we've added to the pre-trip. You need this. Uh, now, I think I'm good. Everybody here? Yeah. Yeah. Just real quick, we're going to go real quick. Uh, we added the things here. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here Bus evacuation and bus accident. 
Um, real quick and easy, most everything here. Uh, bus driver accident guidelines. Um, you're going to do the first four or five. Remain calm, know where you're at. Uh, assess the situation. Set your emergency brakes, secure your vehicle. Um, <clears throat> account for all students. And you're going to notify 911. When you notify 911, you're going to stay on the phone or the radio with 911 until they release you. They are going to want to get all the information they need. Don't be in a hurry to get rid of them. Give them the time they need to get help to you. So when they tell you they're done with you, then you can continue on. Uh, secure the vehicle, set up the, make the scene safe. If, see if the kids stay on the bus. If the situation on the bus seems unsafe, you want to get the kids off the bus and to a safe zone. Um, it, at that point, you're going to notify 911. If you haven't already, then you're going to notify us at the warehouse and we will start the, uh, the chain on the back of the phone sheets, the phone chains. Weekends, evenings, mornings, whatever. The phone number's on here. You're going to be able to get a hold of somebody that will get help to you. Number one, your radio is going to get you help. Number two, if you're, like I said, the evenings or a weekend where the, nobody's in the office for the radio, start going down the phone chain. Somebody will uh, come out and help you out. And your number one priority, safety of the kids. And um, you want to make sure they're safe. You want to do your cursory assessment. Defer to 911. Stay with 911. And follow your sheets. I know we're doing this uh, real short and quick, but we got uh, evacuation procedures, and these are going to be on every bus. Um, you'll be able to see them in the, in the black packets, the same place where uh, your free trip and post trip will be. And on the back end is also the uh, phone number. The other difference in there this year, pre-trip, post-trip, you kind of, we kind of did a little lesson today. We had the DOT here. We added the post-trip to it. Everybody's see a lot of long faces. Check the bus out. You, the, the, it's easy, it's quick. Do it. Give it a cursory check over. And like you said in this class, a lot of things can be taught just by checking out the bus. So, Take the time, check out the bus, and I think we're going to turn it over to giving things starting to do the. Thank you, John. Sorry, uh, short on time because I know he would have liked to share a lot of other things. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, please come up and ask us. I know we're running over, uh, or real close, and um, so certainly thank you all for today being attentive. And I know we're gonna have a great school year. And if you have any questions, again, please come up and ask us or call. We have the roots for you. Please look over them, like I said, get back to us uh, so we can uh, make any adjustments. And there will be additions and changes. As far as the county uh, drivers go, we're still getting names from special ed. So it's hard for us to make some of the routes because I don't have all of that information. And they're supposed to be meeting next week with some of their principals and some more. There's a lot of switching going around and programs and everything. So I'm hoping next week to have know more so I can tell you and not have to switch after I've told you something to begin with. Thank you very much.